Hello, today I'll be discussing ocean simulation in Unity. This video will try to take a glimpse at how difficult it can be to create a game such as Sea of Thieves. So let's discuss waves. Off the top of my head, the first mathematical function I can think of for water waves is the sine function. Although this could work, it isn't as realistic as actual water. To make this look more like waves, we need to take a step back. Imagine a point following the path of a circle. If we duplicate this side by side with slightly different offsets, we can see waves. These are Gertzner waves, and this is what I will be implementing today. To get started, we want to first generate a plane in Unity. Here, I can control the size of the plane and the density of vertices. Now we can generate a plane on start. After the plane is generated, we need to figure out what values each vertex on the plane needs to be. So given a position on the plane and the current time, we can generate a vector that gives us a vertex displacement at that position. Then, on each frame, we can update each vertex. The result of this are waves. One thing to note is that these waves aren't really realistic. The ocean doesn't really look like this. It's more random. To make this look real, we can add multiple Gertzner waves together with different properties such as direction, wavelength, steepness, and speed. The modern approach is to use a fast Fourier transform to approximate thousands of Gertzner waves, but in this video, I'm only going to combine three. After updating the code to take three Gertzner waves, we get this. It's much more random and suits our purpose to somewhat recreate Sea of Thieves. This wave currently looks fine, but as we scale it, it becomes very slow. This is because the algorithm is running for every vertex on the CPU. To fix this, we will create a shader. I will be using Unity's shader graph to replicate this algorithm. Here's our final shader. I know, it looks gross. If you like a detailed explanation, Cat Like Coding has a great article. Moving on, we can now have a huge plane with minimal impact on performance. Our next step in this project is to have a ship reacting with this ocean. I used the same idea found in this video where we can use the buoyancy formula on a cube and attach it to our ship as a floaty. To begin, we first need to figure out how to get the height of the ocean at a given position. Since it is very slow to send data from the GPU, we can just do it on the CPU. As explained in this video by Jump Trajectory, we only know the displacement of the vertex at a given position. To get the height, we can sample the displacement multiple times by moving our position by the horizontal displacement. Doing this about three times gives us an accurate enough value. Using the buoyancy force formula, we can calculate the upward force on the cube. Then, we can attach this cube to our ship and apply each buoyancy force at that position. As you can see, the ship is quite jittery. To fix this, we can apply drag and angular drag. Much better. The last thing to do is to make our ship move with keyboard input. We can import a ship wheel and create a simple script to do rotation. I have also created UI to show how far our wheel has rotated. We can then apply a forward force to the ship at the current angle of the ship wheel. Now our ship moves. One addition we can do to make this even better is to make the plane follow the ship. 
Since each vertex position is based on world coordinates, the plane updates accordingly. We now have an infinite ocean. To make this more game-like, I improved the plane shader, created some islands, and added a pause menu. Feel free to play the game yourself at this link. Now, I left out a lot of details regarding the code structure and Unity intricacies, so if you want to check out the Unity project, I have the project files on my GitHub. That's it for today, so I hope you learned something from this video.